The average lifespan of a Major League Baseball is about seven pitches, but we're pretty sure baseball can take a lot more than that. So we're gonna catch this brand new baseball as many times as it takes to have the cover fall completely off. The only problem with that is Tosh has a date in four hours, so we gotta be done before that. We had no idea how many throws it would take. Tosh thought maybe a thousand. I thought maybe more than that. So we set up a couple pitching machines to do the throwing for us to save our arms. We calculated the average throw velocity of a nice game of catch and it came out to be exactly 69 miles an hour. So that's what we set the machines for. Here we throw go. number one. If you've noticed that we look like fools yeah. trying to catch the ball, let me explain. In addition to seeing how long it would take oh. the ball to break by catching it, we wanted to see how long it might take a glove to break by catching the ball. So we both chose brand new gloves. I chose a custom Bauer Outers uh -oh. glove that they sent me years ago, and Tosh chose one of Eric's brand new SSK catcher's gloves. So comment down below which glove you think will break first. So after 50 throws is what the baseball looks like. It's black, which we didn't expect, but I guess it makes sense because of the, the wheels. wheels, right? The surface of the baseball is a lot more scuffed up than it would be if you were just playing catch with it. Usually the ball is a little bit smoother. It's starting to smell a little. It smells like after I hit a ball really hard. Yeah. You know that good smell after I hit a seed off you? Yeah! 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 Let's go! If you had to classify the smell as something, what would you say it is? Like burnt rubber mixed with burnt hair? Damn it! After catching another 50 throws, it was time for another check-in. The other thing we've noticed about the ball is there are no markings on it left. All of the ink has been rubbed off. It's kind of interesting. You can feel in certain parts so getting a little like sticky. The leather seems to start degrading a little bit. So one thing I've noticed about the glove is my finger is already starting to get sensitive and swollen. So I'm gonna switch from finger in approach to a finger out approach. What do you got on the glove? It's just as stiff as when it started. I have no consistency in catching the ball. Sometimes I have to kind of suck it in. It's getting a little easier to catch, I guess. Maybe that's just wishful thinking. My fingers don't hurt, but my hands don't have much feeling. So we're good. Yeah. You guys ready? It's Friday, there we go. Terrible start. After 200 throws, we started to notice something. Yeah, the ball is definitely getting a little bit uh, hotter. It's more black, it smells more like burnt rubber. Ugh, that smells terrible. You can actually start seeing some of the leather starting to rip off here. It definitely has some texture to it. Mm -hmm. There's some graining to the leather. It doesn't feel smooth like the baseball did when it first came out of the package. What are you noticing? You got anything? I think I'm getting better at catching it with a stiff glove. I don't know if this is actually getting better. It feels maybe a little easier. Also, I switched to finger out of the glove and it helped a lot, but not all the way. Finger's definitely gonna get beat up on this one, my left pointer finger. I'm gonna have to figure out a way to, to solve that. I felt good about that one. Because <laughs> I've noticed that this Nakona glove is definitely a lot more flexible, a lot easier to squeeze. You know, Tosh is not feeling the same way. My forearms and hands starting to cramp up a bit. Still have no idea whether or not this is easier to close or not. It looks like it's moving a lot better. Yeah, I would say it's a little bit more broken in, yeah. but I am starting to hurt. Nope. <laughs> I thought this was gonna be our first one where we didn't drop a single ball. I'll make it through 50. At one point, I will get 50 in a row. After 250 throws, we had an update on one of the gloves. A Nakona glove, out of the box, 250 throws, like perfectly usable, no problem. What do you got over here? Starting to get a little bit of a pocket here where I've been catching the ball. Uh, closing it's getting a little bit easier. Overall, it's still really stiff, and my hand is getting even more tired. Getting a little hard to see it come out. Yeah, it's getting hard for me to see it come out of the machine too. <laughs> I didn't see, I didn't think of that. So after 260 throws, the ball has become the exact same color as the walls of this place. So it's hard to see the ball coming out of the machines. Uh, what I have noticed about the ball though is it's the graining on the leather. It's a lot rougher. It almost feels like a piece of like a fine grit sandpaper now. No real tears or anything on the ball yet. I have noticed a couple little things on my glove. Some of those fine little stitches down there are starting to fray just a little bit. I don't think it's anything problematic, but it is interesting. I'll keep an eye on it. We're 300 throws in, what'd you notice? My hand's getting super tired, so I'm trying to catch up a little by doing this. It's not getting there, but <laughs> pain. We All ready? right, here we go, 50 in a row, starting now. Oh, oh, oh. After 100 more throws, we noticed something with the oh. seams. 
the seams actually feel a little bit more raised. Like they would hurt your fingers more if you threw with them. And because of that, I think the ball is starting to move in different directions in the air. I think in the beginning, the ball shot pretty darn straight and there's one or two that might dart one way or the other, but it was pretty even shooting. Now it's like one goes right, one goes left, they sink, they stay up. And I think that's because the seams relative to the leather are actually getting higher. So it's catching aerodynamic effects in the air. Tasha's glove had not been performing as well as mine, so he started celebrating every time I missed the ball. Hey! You got Fuck me! Fuck you! You got me! <laughs> so after 450 throws, after 500 throws, after 650 throws, we're also an hour in at 700 throws. After 750 throws, what we do have is we have a frayed seam here on this ball. We have a frayed seam right here. Oh, yeah. Would you look at that? Right there. Just a tiny little guy. Tiny little guy, but... Huh. That's really the first sign that we've seen since throw 250 or 300. We're at 800 now, and the first sign of change we've seen with the baseball. So starting to get a, uh, a little fraying of the seams. As soon as one of these seams goes, the thing's gonna unravel really quickly, so. At this point, we were still very confident Tosh was going to make his date. When we got to 1,000 throws, we decided to check in on the gloves. This part of the glove right here where the thumb is, is becoming increasingly flimsy. I think I've caught a couple balls on the thumb and it's kind of bent this back, but this is definitely breaking in quite a bit right here. A couple hundred more throws and we have our first major win. Yeah! <laughs> we did it! We finally did it. We've been after that milestone for a while. We even tried switching gloves and to see if I could do it. Unbelievable. That's, uh, that's devastating. 1,300 throws in. We're starting to see a little bit right here, some of the outer layer, the leather coming off. So more fraying, but safe to say that around 1300 throws with this SSK catcher's glove, you can consider it to be broken in enough where you can catch the ball consistently, right? Would you say that's true? Generally, yeah. 1600 throws in, we're starting to see a lot more fraying on the seams, a lot more individual seams getting frayed. None fully frayed through yet though, but uh, Definitely some texture changes on the seams, definitely some texture changes on the ball itself. The leather is very rough now. Delirium set in around the two hour mark. Get up, I think you got Nacho. I've been ready a long time ago. Ready to go, ready to go, ready to go from cutting Nacho. We're slowly losing our minds. We only had an hour left until Tosh's date, so we started rapid fire rounds. Around throw 2000, we noticed another change right. with the ball. Quite a bit of fraying going on now on this ball right here on the seams. See this, see those two pieces of seam right here and right there all frayed. And there's quite a bit more on the rest of the ball that you can't quite see on camera, but uh, ball's starting to come apart. We're 2,850 throws in and we're seeing that this seam right here is hanging on by literally a thread. So we're almost through our first seam and then I'm hopeful that once we're through the first one, the whole thing just unravels. My confidence was short-lived. After three hours and 20 minutes of catching the same baseball and 3,000 throws, Tosh's date finally arrived. <laughs> And that meant we had missed our deadline. At this point, 3,000 throws in, we were starting to question how many throws this would actually take. 5,000, 10,000, more? We had no idea, but we came back the next day ready to break this thing. <laughs> I look forward to this ball ripping. Uh, I see you have a glove on today. Yeah, the new glove tore into my hand a little. I just didn't want to keep doing that, so I wore a glove. Everything in my glove is still intact. It looks honestly like pretty brand new still as is Tasha's. Tasha's glove looks pretty brand new. Let's see if we can rip this cover off the baseball. After 200 throws, we have a seam that is ripped. Look at this, right there. We think we're pretty close right now to getting all the seams to start ripping and the cover to start coming off this ball. I couldn't have been more wrong. Well, it's taken another 750 throws before I notice that uh, another seam is about to go. So we're 4,100 throws in. Looks like we're gonna be in for a long haul here. We got a lot more throws to go. Okay, 4,300 throws in. Uh, 4,550 throws in, we finally got a second seam to break. Maybe that'll be the part that uh, breaks apart, but um, <laughs> it's not gonna be anytime soon. I think a couple of seams broke in Tosh's head at this point because this doesn't look safe at all. That's what 5,000 throws will do to you. 4,900 throws in, my hand is starting to wear it. We've now shifted to two fingers in the pinky slot, middle fingers in the ring finger slot, and the pointer finger is wrapped around all the way over here. <laughs> so I'm hoping that I catch the ball kind of right in this part of the glove, because uh, my hand is hurting a little bit. Fuck. <laughs> 5,200 throws in, we have 18 seams that are broken now. 
2,700 balls the second day was all we could take. Staring at a singular point in the middle of three spinning wheels for three hours had created an optical illusion in my eyes and my eyesight was starting to fail me. We thought that was pretty unsafe and we thought about scrapping it all together to be honest, but we decided to press on. After 5,950 throws, the ball is starting to dance everywhere. Yeah, the ball's going everywhere. Yeah. It's like cutters, rise balls, sinkers. And then it's followed up by a dead straight, then go hoop. Yeah, there's some that are like dead straight, but then the next dead straight one are like dead straight with die, yeah. and then the next one will like have lift. It's really interesting. We have these pitching machines set to throw dead backspin balls, so the ball should be going straight every time, but it's dipping, diving, ducking, dodging. What's the other one? What's the other D of dodgeball? Dodge, yeah. <laughs> it's dip, dodge, duck, dive, and dodge. Definitely some aerodynamic effects going on. The laces being torn and the ball having all sorts of rough surface. So kind of interesting, hard to catch, but pretty cool from a science perspective. And with that throw, we officially crossed the halfway mark. Thank God we didn't know that in the moment. We would have canned the whole thing. They're gonna fall <laughs> in the nuts. <laughs> Woo! We got a camera here for a time lapse, taking a picture of the ball in the same spot every 50 throws. So we'll be able to see the lifespan of a baseball over time. Should be pretty cool. <laughs> it's ready for now. 6,200 throws in. These seams are getting pushed underneath the leather. They're breaking at a pretty fast rate now. This is the fastest degradation I've seen so far. 6,400 throws in. These laces are starting to stretch a little bit. Now, nothing's torn or anything like that. It's honestly impressive that it's taken 6,400 throws for those laces to start stretching out. <laughs> oh boy oh my gosh so we stopped at 6900 throws very nice and i counted how many seams are broken there are 69 seams on this ball broken that's just such a nice update still intact that was 69 69 you know the worst part about this whole thing, who has the worst job, is Kevin. Kevin has to render this footage and edit it, which is gonna render his computer useless for like seven days. What we get, Tosh is over here, head down in, a, in the basket of baseballs. Leave me alone, I'm trying to rest. <laughs> At 7,500 throws, yeah, rest sounded pretty good to me too. So we decided to take the night and pick it up the next day. Yeah, so we're pretty close. You know you said that about 4,000 throws. Would be as soon as one of these seams goes, once we're through the first one, the whole thing just unravels. We think we're pretty close right now. They're breaking at a pretty fast rate now. I won't ever look at a baseball the same. <laughs> 8,350 throws in. We noticed the first sign of leather peeling off the ball. So this ridge right here, the direction my thumb's going is starting to fray. And so I'm hoping that starts peeling up. And that's what we need to see this thing break. This delirium is starting to set in. Tosh is over here firing the rosin bag. Oh. Yeah. Dude, that was a good shot. That's, that's where we're at after uh, 8,350. That's unbelievable. At this point, the wheels kind of fell off. The shoot was taking way longer than we expected. We didn't want to move the time-lapse setup, so we'd had a desk in the middle of the training floor for like two weeks. Then we decided to make homemade gloves, and Tosh had a bit of an unfortunate accident that had him out for two months. Ooh, pain tolerance, baby. During that time, the time-lapse setup got moved, and we were pretty sure we were never actually going to finish this test. But we were too far in to not see this through, so when Tosh felt good enough to catch again, we picked it back up. But we're on throw 10,500, and we're gonna see if we can get this stupid baseball to break. The gloves are not broken, the baseball is not broken. We just want this to be over at this point. What if this is just one of those videos that takes like three years? I'm sorry, Kevin. <sighs> 11,000 throws in. These seams here are starting to kind of like fray and like poke out, but we don't know if that's a good thing. Tosh is the king of analogies, and he said it's like we started digging a hole and forgot why. We were riding pretty high at this point, but 190 throws later, disaster struck. It ripped. My glove ripped. I don't know why. Your glove made it through. Yeah, my glove's chilling. What are we gonna do? Snaps Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. I love that. Yeah. 11,450 throws in and the baseball is sprouting a new baseball. Maybe it's growing a second baseball that we're going to have to destroy. Sick. We were finally, finally getting somewhere. 
I felt, oh, there's a, it's lifting. Do you see the lift? Oh, dude. I know. That's gotta be good for it, us. It has to be. Yeah. Yeah, or it's shedding its skin. Yeah, it's starting, it's molting. Yep, it's molting. Imagine it ends in 10 throws. <laughs> oh my God, dude. <laughs> Why is it always to me? So we are at the point of the video where it's getting a little unsafe to catch the ball and it's cutting, rising, running. This entire strip of weather is completely separated from the ball in the sense that there's no seams connecting it to the ball. This is where it really gets fun and very dangerous. This content just got real. Ooh, that was a good one. Oh, did you get that one, Chels? Got it. Dude, that was... Disgusting. At this point, we set up the slow motion camera to see exactly what was going on with the ball in the air. This is our baseball right now. Tosh has figured out how to make it do things. What's your secret? Uh, shark fin. <laughs> yeah, except that's fucked up. The challenge has become, I just don't want you to catch it. He was doing a pretty good job of that. Before you watch these last couple clips, I have to say it's hard to see on video just how much the ball was moving in the air, but you can tell from our reactions how hard it was to catch this thing. It looks like we've never played the game before. <laughs> the sneak attack. <laughs> what a dick. Oh, dude. That was so scary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. That's the grossest <laughs> shit. You go that way, you go that way. Yeah. Ow. Oh, dear God. Last one. Last one, I better catch it. <laughs> Ooh, shark oh, fin though. Shark. Massive shark fin. And it's like in a diagonal. Yeah. Perfect spin axis. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Hit you in the shoulder. Oh, right here. You yeah. got me in the shoulder and in the face. <laughs> So after 12,101 throws, I'm bowing out because this shit's way too dangerous. So that's 15 hours at least over the course of three months to get to this point. That's what happens when you uh, catch a baseball 12,100 times. Uh, the leather still isn't all the way off, but you can no longer catch it because it's way too dangerous. So hope you guys enjoy the video. One. Did it Didn't cut get the to, ball? Yeah, cut the ball. So we're gonna start over. 